In a League of Their Own podcast is brought to you by Smooth My Balls. Are you sick of snagging your nuts or cutting yourself with a generic Bic razor or generic clipper? Well, now you don't have to worry. Smooth My Balls offers a five-star below-the-belt care for men, starting with the Turf Chopper 3.0, the next-level razor that provides a very smooth and clean finish with no cuts on your sack. And coming in for the closer, you got the Pube Muncher 1.0, a compact mini vac that cleans up the job with no hair left behind. Head over to smoothmyballs.com today and use code LEAGUE at checkout for 15% off your top of the line men's grooming kit. Again, that's LEAGUE, L E A G U E, for 15% off. Smooth my balls, shave like a pro. Rep Sports. Rep Sports is a leading supplement and nutrition company that provides everything from pre-workout and protein to recovery supplements. If you're looking for a healthy pick-me-up, Rep also offers Raise Energy, a zero sugar drink that helps with workout with workout and recovery uh, mental focus as well. Head over to repsports.com today and use code LEAGUE for 15% off your order. That's L-E-A-G-U-E for 15% off. Golf kicks. Tired of wearing the same old pair of boring golf shoes? Not the most comfortable? Now you don't have to worry. Customize all types of shoes from Crocs to flip flops, sneakers to boat shoes, and wear them in style while you rip it up on the course. Head over to golfkicks.com and use code OWN20 at checkout to get a 20% discount on your order. That's O W N 20. Screw your shoes. Dreamer loot. Want to rep the best up and coming sports podcast? Of course, you do. Head over to streamerloot.co today and check out our first line of, of merch. We have t shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, and stickers. Again, that is streamerloot.co to check out our merch. Hey, everybody, it is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. The Winnipeg Jets sweep McDavid's Oilers in triple overtime. And Aaron Rodgers finally speaks out on the drama with the Packers. And there goes that man's jock <laughs> Oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> America's team? Yeah, right. Oh baby, it's a big day in sports. There's nothing like battling it out with your teammates all season long to go win a championship. Green Bay's got it this year. Huge move for him. I think it's going to be a game changer. We have a lot to talk about this busy week in the sports world. Welcome to the In a League of Their Own podcast. All right, guys, again, welcome to the show. Um, again, diving right into the NFL right away. Um, Aaron Rodgers kind of came out of his cave about the whole situation going on. Um, what was kind of the takeaway, I guess, from his little interview last night? Basically, what I got out of that was everything is still on the table. He loves all the players, all the coaches. Um, he said it comes down. It's a mindset. Some It comes down to a mindset. And hearing Pat McAfee talk about that earlier today with AJ Hawk, they're just poking questions like, what do you think that means and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of seems like it's Rogers and the floor almost battling it out against the upper office of who's got full control on which way this organization goes. And you look at past, um, Jordy Nelson getting let go when he wants to stay, Cobb getting let go when he wants to stay, Favre getting let go. And, you know, management up to this point hasn't been pro player. It's always been pro Packers. And, and I don't know. It's going to be interesting here. June 1st is coming up really quick. And it's going to be interesting to see which, which way the wind blows, um, whether they're going to, hand the keys to Aaron and say, we should have did this a long time ago. We're sorry. Or is it going to be, Hey, shut up and play football. Yeah. Like you said, it's going to be interesting once uh, next month rolls around as far as what's going to exactly going to happen with that. Um, Another one, another name with that Julio Jones. Again, we briefly talked about him yesterday, Richard Sherman. um, Basically those two Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers are kind of your top four guys of where, where are they going to land? Are they staying? What's going on with them? So um, hopefully by the 
the end of the first week in June, we'll kind of get some of those answers. But yeah, circling back to Rogers, kind of watching that interview, he kind of approached looks it. Looks really happy. Yeah, he kind of, and it was kind of funny too. He kind of approached it with like the Marshawn Lynch mindset of "I'm just here so I won't get fined" kind of thing, because um, I'm sure he's been getting badgered by reporters and insiders left and right for the past couple of weeks to finally come out and say something. And I don't even know who's he, who do you even talk to last night? I don't remember the guy's name. Kenny Maine. Or Kenny Maine. Like, how, like how many names come or come to mind for people that for him to sit down and talk to ahead of Kenny Maine a lot. So it kind of makes you wonder how he, I guess, got the nod to sit down with Rogers and finally get him to spill the beans about stuff. Rogers loves Kenny, actually. Uh, he's actually looked up to him as one of his favorite broadcasters. And he got asked, because this this was Kenny's last hurrah on ESPN, um, Rogers actually reached out and he wanted to come on on the show. So he wanted to come out and finally say something. Uh, yeah, the, he did kind of do the whole, not really say too much, but also at the same time, he knew that he was going to get asked and, I thought it was really funny because Kenny g- going, being who he is, knowing the public is watching him. He can't not ask, you know, and how he had kept poking and prodding, trying to get him to say something. It's the world wants to hear what, what he's got to say. And looks like that will be con- to be continued. You know, he didn't show up to OTAs first day. Neither did all the starting wide receivers. Not a big deal. It's voluntary. There's so many other teams that aren't even in the building. Tampa's not in the building. So the Super Bowl champs aren't working. I feel like it's not no big deal that Rodgers isn't there. Um, yeah, to be continued. And I forgot, A.J. Brown, is he's on the Titans, correct? The wide mm-hmm. receiver? Yep. He uh, Instagrammed at uh, Julio yesterday saying – come come over here dude and we'll, you want to be on a winning team we'll show you what winning's all about type of thing and Devonte commented in the comments and said yeah chill lol <laughs> so it makes you wonder if if the packers got some something up their sleeve here to get them in the building yeah and then one one other thing i guess that kind of rogers quieted the haters about the whole situation was um rogers came out and said it would like he has a good relationship with Jordan Love. It was never about him. He said that there's no specific person in the organization that he's pointing fingers at. He said it all just comes down to a philosophy of just him trying to shine light on people like him, the stars of the game that make this league run every single year. So I think it, and I think that's a good move for him. It's a chess move for players like him to kind of take that initiative. Um, even in like the NBA, you finally see guys who are just, you get, you're like, you hear the thing of like, shut up and dribble. Cause it's finally, those guys are starting to take an initiative for um, player respect, initiative, safety, um, all that kind of stuff to where for years it's been, they just, they're nobodies for eight months out of the year. And when they're in season for roughly four months, obviously baseball is longer than that, but other sports are roughly four to six months that they're in season um when they're outside that four to six months they're relevant and when they're inside that four to six months they're just supposed to show up work out show up on the on the field or on the rink or on the court do their thing and then leave and go back to their house so it's kind of nice for again rogers to point that out that these guys are more than that they're individual like they they get like put on this podium, but at the same time, they're obviously mentally no different than you and I physically, obviously they they're different, but um, I don't know. I feel like that that just get gets lost a lot for these professional athletes to where they get treated like robots, but people forget again, they're just like us. Oh yeah, absolutely. And a part of a big part of this, one thing from the article um, that came out about this was that, a lot of the damage was done during last season more than any outside of what happened. And I feel like that's because Aaron Rodgers changed as a person or as a person, he finally found out who he was as a person through meditation, doing yoga, all that other. And he finally found where his 
purpose and enlightenment in himself is. And I feel like that him going back to Green Bay into the the old way of doing things doesn't really fit with how he is as a person anymore. Like he outgrew the old Aaron Rodgers and he's a new person now. And I feel like he's just encouraging the Green Bay Packers to say, hey, let's take a step back here and let's all move up together as an organization. Let's take the stride to whether it's mental health stuff, meditation, yoga, whatever, eating better, whatever the he wants to implement to get or I guess people should also be encouraged to do this as by the organization to be like better yourself. The best you is the best that you could do for other people. So I feel like Rogers really figured that out. And I feel like he's just through this chest move is trying to encourage the organization to either take the step with him or let him go and find his own debt, you know, like let him make his own destiny. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, again, that'll be continued um, next week again with Ju- June 1 coming up early next week. Um, again, it's not a guarantee anything's going to happen next week, but it's just kind of one of those um, things for people to look forward to. Oh, something might happen. Something might not happen at all. It literally might shake out a couple weeks before the season even starts. Um, I mean, looking back to like Le'Veon Bell, he ended up holding out for a year because of the conditions in Pittsburgh. So um, obviously I don't see it coming to that point, but you never know what happens. It's all business. So um, what the last NFL point, at least I have to throw out there, and it's something we talked about last week is Antonio Brown was that last missing piece for the Bucks to re-sign um, to bring back all of their starters on both sides of the ball. There was just a stipulation of him passing a physical and today he did indeed pass that physical. So he'll be back uh, with the Bucks. Um, again, we both, neither of us were really concerned about that. Um, obviously, he's still um, getting up there in age, but still obviously in great shape. And it was just something I saw today and want to throw out there with, again, the Bucks basically being back in full shape to go back to back and um, try to go for that perfect season that Brady was talking about. Yeah, and continuing on the box here, O.J. Howard was interviewed today earlier on the Pat McAfee show um, and basically was asked about the perfect season type of thing with Tom Brady, and I'm not going to get too deep into it here, but basically he, it came down to him saying this team know, is aware of the situation. They feel it. Um, when Tom came into the, into the down into Tampa, he changed the organization. Like you could feel like the culture changed, and – He said that on paper, they are talented enough to go ahead and pull that perfect season off. So good luck to Tampa Bay this season. And that'd be awesome to see a team do that. Um, There's only been one team, the Dolphins, to ever do it. So it'd be cool to have another team pull that feed off as Brady was so close the first time. And then two more, um, actually a few more things here. Deshaun Watson news. Turns out he's not going to be deposed until early 2022. So it's up to Goodell whether he's either going to put him on the exempt list or if he's going to clear him here and he's going to let him play this season out and then next season go into whatever happens with the lawsuits. Obviously, if he does play this season, making it into the postseason will be early 2022. So I don't know if that if like early is January, February, Super Bowl time, or if it's going to be like March, April. So who knows what that's going to be? But yeah, some news should be coming out about that fairly soon here. Um, what Goodell's going to do on that situation? Dak Prescott and Joey Bosa excited to be back, healthy, ready to go for their teams this season, and Nick Bosa as well um, for the 49ers, all with big injuries to their legs last season all coming back saying they're pumped up happy excited ready to go for day one and then the last bit of news here jj watt to make a signature shoe honoring pat tillman um the shoe is supposed to drop by nike here within the next couple weeks i saw a a pre-design of that and it looked really really cool um and yeah, just one more thing with J.J. Watt, if people didn't see, 
he gave a shout out to the Canadians to throw Cole Caulfield out there on the ice, and they did. So he's been on the lineup ever since. So I wonder if they're JJ Watt fans up there in Montreal or if they just, uh, it was time to put the kid in the lineup. But yeah, that's all I got in the NFL here. All right. And uh, switching over to the hardwood then, the NBA. Um, again, in full swing, just like the NHL with the playoffs. Um, some. Uh, good games from yesterday. Uh, again, the the Bucks. We briefly talked about them yesterday, but again, just giving them a shout out. Again, our hometown team took a two zero uh, series lead over the Heat. Um, so series now sh- uh, shifts over to Miami. Uh, I believe the Bucks are still favored uh, by a point or point and a half for that game tomorrow. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but. Um, as far as games today, um, uh, ones that, or at least one that's been finalized, again, the Nets, they took care of business tonight against, against the Celtics with a 22-point win. Um, from my understanding, before we went live, you said something about Jason Tatum uh, going out at one, at one point? Yeah, he got poked in the eye in the second quarter, and they came out and said that he wasn't going to play the rest of the game. All right. Well, not that I not that I think he probably would have made much of a difference. He probably would have had to come out and drop fifty like he did um, last week to try to make this a somewhat rev- relevant game. But um, I mean, at this point, the the game switches over to Boston. Um, so if the Celtics are going to have any little bit of, I guess, momentum, they got to win both. They got to win both, um, which uh, is tough, <laughs> which is tough against a Nets team that <clears throat> is looking uh, like they're going to win it all. No problem. Yeah. And you've made the joke about it before and just watching their highlights. It looked like the Harlem Globetrotters uh, out there with just kind of making everybody else look Razzle silly. Dazzle. Um, yeah. Uh, two other games, I guess, to pay attention to that are currently going on. One being the Lakers and the Suns, uh, currently sitting uh, six forty-five left in the second. Lakers are up one uh, thirty-five to thirty-four. There. Yeah, if you um, just went on an eighteen to six run here. And then the other one, uh, Mavericks and Clippers. Um, both of these series are kind of interesting for the fact that uh, the Lakers, being the seven seed. Uh, Going into the two seed, the Lakers are favored. The Lakers drop game one. The Clippers are the two seed in the West, a highly favored in that series as well. The Mavs get the win on the road in game one. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, the Lakers can bounce back. Um, again, if they can take a game one on the road and then the series switches over to LA, that'd be a big momentum switch for them because then if they can win both their games at home, then they take a three, one lead. And then it's all elimination games from there on out. Um, What's the score of that game? Which one clips? Um, that one is Mavericks are up 31, 23. So eight point lead for the Mavs again, a uh, little under three minutes left in the first on that one. Um, so both of those games uh, we'll dive into in the next episode, kind of recap both of those, but um, those are currently going on for us right now. So um, just want to give a little shout out to the scores there. And then again, any highlights that happen. And then we'll obviously talk about the winners of those series and see um, if those series get evened up or if the Mavs and Suns take a 2 0 lead. Yeah. And then uh, sticking with the Dallas Mavericks, Kristaps Porzingis was fined 50K after popping bottles in the club after victory in game one. Um, that that's a penny that's, you know, pennies in a bucket to him. So that, that ain't no big news. The other thing that I have, Julius Randall wins most improved player of the year and Jordan Clarkson wins sixth man of the year. So shout out to those guys. Uh, great seasons. Randall's still going right now in the postseason as well as Clarkson. So yeah, we'll see what these guys got in the postseason. see if they can, uh, top off those uh, individual awards with, with the chip. Yeah. It was cool for Clarkson as well, becoming the first jazz player to win the sixth uh, man of the year award as well. 
Um, and the cool thing with that as well, his uh, teammate, uh, Engels, w- was second in the voting for that award. So um, either way, a Jazz player was going to win that one. So, um, again, the Jazz um, were kind of been that uh, an irrelevant team ever since uh, Joe Stockton um, or John Stockton, not Joe Stockton, um, <laughs> left there. But, um, but yeah, good to see them kind of making a rebound and uh, obviously being in the playoffs and being the number one seed in the West. Um, looks like they kind of struggled again in game one without uh, Donovan Mitchell. So obviously they're going to have to put their money where their mouth is and say, oh, it's because he was out. Obviously, if they come out and struggle and uh, lose game two, then they're going to be in trouble because there's nobody else on that. (laughs) Nobody else out right now that's going to come in and get production like Mitchell is for that team. So uh, hopefully they get back on track. But um, the Grizzlies as well, though, taking down Golden State Warriors can't really count them out. Again, these are the top eight teams on each side in, in each conference. You can't really count any of them out. It's the NBA, and then on top of that, it's playoff basketball. So it's whoever shows up on any given night. Yep, it's sports. Anything can happen any given night. That's why you give it your best. But as you tend to do see in series, the better team will win. So it doesn't matter if you're the eighth seed or the one seed. The better team will come out victorious when you are playing the series where it's just a one game, it's kind of a coin flip of who's hot that night. We're over a series. you got to continue to do it over and over again. And, yeah, the seeding is basically home court advantage to away team is how they decide who's home team and who's away team. And obviously the fans type of thing. But either way, you're still having the same amount of games in the home barn as the away barn. Granted, the home team, you do get game seven. But, yeah, I feel like – don't seeds don't matter best team best team comes out on top for sure um any other points to add to the nba no that's all i got for the nba all right i'm gonna jump over to the diamond then for some a couple baseball points um just last week uh cory kluber gave the mlb uh their sixth no hitter of the year and his first start uh, back since that no hitter, uh, he only pitches three innings and then gets pulled due to some shoulder tightness. Uh, he's going to have an MRI, MRI done on that. I guess that's just precautionary. Um, but I guess if something's torn or whatever, he could miss some time, but, um, that, that didn't seem to be anything, I guess, concerning there. So, um, a couple other injuries, I guess, to point out, um, Toronto Blue Jays pitcher David Phelps. Uh, he's going to miss the rest of the season after a lat surgery. Uh, Bryce Harper is going to miss some time as well. He's put on the 10 day injury injury leave list with a Could bruise. Could be in a pussy, Bryce. <laughs> Could be in a pussy, Bryce. <laughs> he's on the down. He's got. He's on the down slope. He's got to blame Dude, it on a something. Bruised form. Come on, Harp. Come on, Harpski. That sounds like it's your own fault. Bruce forearm means that you didn't feel the ball correctly and it hit your arm. Like that's your own damn fault. Get out there and fucking play. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, he's going to be out with some time there. And then um, the Brewers, uh, they took game one of their series with the Padres uh, five to three. Um, again, have a three game win streak now. Um that game is currently going on uh, for us as well, I believe, or it might have just finished up, did finish up. Padres won that one seven to one. Kind of looked like it was going that way. I think the Padres, so the, the, the Padres put up, uh, it was either four runs in one inning or two in, in one and two in the next. But either way, Padres, one of the highest scoring teams in the MLB right now. You can only slow them down for so, for so long, but um, still a game left in that series. So um, Brewers can still win the series uh, in their next game. But uh, the last couple points here, the U S uh, grants visas to the Cuban national baseball team, Olympic trials for baseball are just around the corner. So um, obviously great with, even though in the midst of COVID still going on that the U S grants, um, one of the best countries uh, to produce baseball players in Cuba to allow them to come try out for the U S national team. Obviously some of them 
are going to stay with Cuba. Um, a lot of the guys or even some U S athletes that play professional sports here, go back to their home country countries for the Olympics. Um, so obviously it's cool to see that, but I guess we'll kind of see what Cuba contributes to the U S team. Yeah. And, Cuba sucks for baseball. Yeah. It's all Dominican Republic, Venezuela, mm-hmm. Cuba. It's all those countries who are super, super good. Yeah. And then the uh, the last point with the MLB here, uh, the race in the NL West tightens as the Dodgers move to half a game back from the Padres, and the Giants are only a, ha- a game and a half back as well. Um, the Dodgers and the Giants are going to go head to head for a weekend, a four game weekend series starting on Thursday. So that series is going to be kind of a duel for second in the division, and even potentially first, depending on how the Padres do this weekend as well. So. Um, that's just a fun, a fun division to watch right now. In years past, it's always been the Dodgers run away with it. Oh, a hundred win season, hundred win season, hundred win season, and making their postseasons run runs year after year. Um, and just with um, kind of the other uh, National League divisions as they fall, um, it's going to be tough in that division. Obviously, the as it looks right now, the Padres, Giants, and Dodgers all look like they could be playoff teams, but only one, maybe two, are going to get the nod for the playoffs. So obviously it's going to be a race. Again, it's early in the year, but these series all make a difference, especially when you're playing within your own division because it comes down to tiebreakers at the end of the year as well. So, um, yeah, that'll be a series to pay attention to this weekend. And that's all I got for baseball. I got one quick thing for baseball. Uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. hits his 16th dinger earlier today. So he takes first place. He passes Otani there. Um, So, yeah, he's got the outright lead in the MLB with 16 dingers so far. I feel like that's a lot. I feel like that's on pace to hit, like, 60. Mm, I'm sure he'll slow down eventually, but 60... 60 of you breaking some records because usually you're well, like, Sammy Sosa and them used to hit 80, 90. Yeah, I think, like, I think actually, I think the record's like 82, maybe. But the juice but like, era, but as of recent, like, usually upper 30s, low 40s is kind of your benchmark for leading 40s for- is a great season, yeah. So like, obviously, right now, at kind of the quarter getting close to the quarter way point of the season. Yes, that would put him on close to getting 60, but also um, you're not going to stay hot forever. He's going to hit a slump eventually. Doesn't mean he's going to stay in that slump forever, but um, 60 would be an amazing mark. Can be done, but I guess we'll see what happens with that one. Um, and then... I have a couple golf things here before uh, I jump into okay. the hockey stuff here. Uh, the first thing in the NCAA... Uh, Rachel Heck out of Stanford becomes the first D1 female to win the conference regional and national championship as a freshman. Uh, She won by like three strokes, I believe. And yeah, from what people are saying is she could be a future woman's phenom on the LPGA tour when she finishes up her career here at Stanford. Uh, Stanford produces a lot of golfers. Uh, the greats tiger especially um now you might have one of the greats coming out here on the ladies side so pretty cool for stanford university and shout out to their golf program they are in the finals for the women's as well for the team golf so uh best of luck to them tomorrow as that wraps up and a, a team national champion will be declared tomorrow so shout out to that and then one thing i will dive into here um I'm going to ask you what your opinion is on this video comes out Brooks Kepka as he is interviewed, talking to a guy just completely disgusted by Bryson DeChambeau as he walks by. Um, What do you think? Do you think this is awesome for the game of golf that we're seeing a, a rivalry heat up right in front of our eyes? Or I mean, do you think that, this is kind of two two guys just overplaying things here. No, I th- I think it's it's obviously great for the game of golf. Again, the, the way it's 
developed over the past couple of years with um, content creators bringing awareness to more of the game. Um, some guys putting their own spin on it, either by the way they dress, or the way they play the game in some more non-traditional fashions. Um, it's making the game of golf fun again to where it's kind of taking that stigma of walk, walk a certain way, play a certain way, talk a certain way, um, and just kind of making the game more fun and kind of making it more fun to watch. Um, and yeah, but having a rival in golf is kind of like every, I mean, everybody's everybody's rival because like you're all out there, you're golfing alongside somebody who, um, you may may or may not be close to on, 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 on the scoreboard. You may or may not have golfed with them ever before, but you're competing against them at the same time because you're both are golfing together. Well, and um, you're with each other all the time. You're at the same clubhouses. You're shooting the same practice rounds every mm-hmm. single, you know, you're not getting away from these people. You're always all that motherfucker again, you know, mm-hmm. it's always, yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like with these little quirks of these, of guys like Bryson DeChambeau kind of being known as the power hitter guy. And then people call um, him a golf nerd. A the lot of people don't yeah that's one of the reasons why a lot of people despise him is first it was the brooks kind of started it with years i think it was in 19 when he, he was chirping his pace of play and how he took forever and other golfers are like yeah this dude kind of pulls out the notepad and fucking does math and shit in his head you know it takes 10 minutes to hit the ball kind of chirped him that way and then bryson's like okay and then, like, supposedly years ago, they got asked if they would fist fight who would win, and DeChambeau was like, Brooks would kick my ass. <laughs> and a lot of people think that maybe that's why DeChambeau hit the weights and put on 35 pounds of muscle so that if they were to get in a tussle, that he could actually stand his ground. Because a lot of people say Brooks Kepka is the most chill, fun guy on the whole entire tour to golf with. Like, he doesn't give two shits about, like – He even comes out and says how sometimes during a round, like in majors, he gets so bored during the round that he loses like his train of thought, like where he is. Like he's that fucking cool of a guy to where he's just like, yeah, I'm I'm just out here just shooting around at golf. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's nice and sunny outside. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, dude, I think this is awesome. And the U.S. Open is next month in June. TV has to put these guys together on the tee box. They got to make this a matchup. People want to see it. Yeah. And it'd be, like how many said, people be would fun. Tune in. Yeah. How many people would tune in? It's like the Tiger Phil matchup, you know, like, oh my God, they're playing together. Everybody's going to tune in and watch. You'd get, you'd get the best golf ratings. Like there was 13 million people that watched on Sunday which was one of the highest ratings that golf has had. I can only see it increasing from here. If you put this match up together, you're getting them chirping each other on live television. You got mic them up and like to, to obviously pick, pick up bits and pieces where they're not, where it's not too vulgar or not vulgar and everything's just beep, 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 beep back and forth at each other. But, but yeah, that'd be awesome for the game of golf. It's something, uh, I mean, I, I've never seen in my lifetime. It's very, it's again up until i'd say three to five years ago it's been a very formal industry and now it's you're starting to see a a fun side to it as ratings go up younger guys who again probably has something to do with as far as like the millennial gen z generations kind of putting their spin on really any industry um within sports um it's good to see golf is kind of taking on these young guys and um Welcome, welcoming them with open arms and to all their quirks and whatever they do. Absolutely. And I feel like for the fans, this is even more fun for the fans who love, love these golfers. Who, if you're a Brooks guy or a Bryson guy, cause you can't be both at this point. And this last weekend, I don't know if you saw on television Brooks on the tee box, he had a couple Kepka fans following him around. Every time he'd hit the ball off the tee box, one guy would go, oh, yeah. And the <laughs> other guys would go, Brooks, Brooks, Brooks. Mm. And the, supposedly McAfee was the one that reported this today that he heard through his little group. But off air, like after he hit a shot and whatever, he turned to the crowd and said, whoever the fuck is doing that, get out of here. 
<laughs> he got annoyed with it after like the eighth or ninth hole of them doing it. And it's just like, that's what you're going to get now. You're going to get fans who love one guy, hate the other guy sitting by the green, who just getting in their head, making them hit a shitty tee shot off the next tee box. And, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the thing too. That's try to help their guy out. That kind of stuff almost backfires, especially where if it, if it comes out as, oh, this guy got rattled from some hecklers on the tee box. Now more people are going to show up because like, oh, this guy gets rattled easily because 90% of the guys out there, they're just, they're robots. They, the they're, they, they don't listen to any outside noise. So as soon as one guy cracks, it's like, oh, finally somebody cracked. Let's let's go follow this guy around and bother him. Like, so you because that's just club. Yeah. Because it's, you look at, like, you look at the NFL, home field advantage, the crowd can give the home team some juice, NBA, hockey as well. In golf, as a fan, that's the only way you have an impact on the game is by getting in a player's head and fucking them up. And like, you only have a little short period of time to do it, too. Off the tee box and when they're walking up to their second shot or up to the green, like because that's pretty much all you can chirp them is in between times but yeah like for golf fans if you really want to get into a guy's head look at happy gilmore look what that guy did to shooter mcgavin you know he got in his head (laughs) totally can happen you can get one guy who just loves getting in this guy's head and who knows if he's on brooks payroll you know he could he could be buying this guy tickets going and say hey fucking get in this guy's head let's see what we can get this weekend yeah yeah, no, it's it's definitely again, it's a lot of fun with the golf industry, the the trend it's taking, and um, again with the U.S. Open, just a couple weeks away, it'll be interesting to see if they get paired up or if something happens with that, or um, yeah, it'll just be some fun to pay attention to. And then yeah, um, kind of the last topic of the day, per usual, on the ice. What's going on? Yeah, over let's there? let's jump right into it right now. Carolina Hurricanes just win in overtime here. Jordan Stahl, the captain, buries one in, bets it on a midair. And the storm surge is a rocket down to Carolina right now. Um, they take the series lead three to two. They head into Smashville, um, I believe, on Thursday. Nashville's backs against the wall at home here. I'm looking to Carolina to get it done out there in Nashville. Um Last night, the Minnesota Wild keep the series alive and stun the Vegas Golden Knights four to one on 14 shots. They got out shot basically four to one. It was, I think it was like 42 to 14. Hell of a game for Cam Talbot, the goalie for the Minnesota Wild. Um, unbelievable. That team plays tremendous defense, and that's kind of what the, it seems like they bought into last night. They didn't get gypped on a goal, taking that 3-0 lead, and look what happened. It was 4-1. So those the, those goals getting called off early in the season, if, looks like if that doesn't continue to haunt the Minnesota Wild going forward, looks like they could take the 7. So that series was interesting. And then I stayed up late last night to catch the Winnipeg Jets take out Connor McDavid in triple overtime. Um, Kyle Connor basically had a breakaway. Guys retired. Edmonton made a shitty change, and that's what you get. Guy snipes late in overtime, catch the goalie who's a little bit tired. Um, they were bringing in like 12 packs of Coke and pizzas and stuff in between the overtimes because guys are gassed. So, yeah, Mc, uh, McDavid's done, as well as the Oilers. Uh, Wayne Gretzky stepping away from his role in the organization and he is set to become a TNT analyst for next season when the NHL jumps over onto TNT. So a big move from the great one as uh, we're going to be seeing him on live television being an analyst for the NHL next season. I think that's a great move. And clearly him, he, he came out and basically said he doesn't have the time to devote what he really needs to devote to the Edmonton Oilers anymore, especially with COVID and everything. Like he just doesn't have the time with everything that he's involved in and everything that he does to continue to do what he's done for the Oilers. And I feel like coming up short in the playoffs here, um, getting swept, really kind of getting embarrassed. I feel like that that's just writing on the wall almost. To, yeah, let's, let's move on in life and let's try to find something else to do. And he's the great one. So I'm sure he's going to be a great analyst. Montreal loses. They lost tonight. Uh, they got their ass handed to him by Toronto. Toronto just skating circles around them. 
cool to see Cole Caulfield out there, but yeah, Montreal is no match for Toronto. Toronto's going to move on here after they win the next game. I bet it's 4-1. And if they don't right now, I mean, if you're a Winnipeg Jets fan, you're rooting for Montreal to make that series go as long as it can and wear down Toronto as much as you can. Since you're off a sweep, you're already resting. So every, every bit of hockey and every hit that Toronto's going to take here is definitely going to be impactful in the, in the Winnipeg series. And then, like I said, yep, Carolina wins um, tomorrow. Some huge games, all elimination games. Pittsburgh going into Long Island down three to two in the series. Minnesota hosts Vegas down three, two in the series and down in Tampa, Florida takes on the Tampa Bay lightning facing brink of elimination again. So those are going to be great games to watch tomorrow. We'll break those down tomorrow night. Um, I'm sure maybe even a game will be going while our episode's going. So we'll talk about that during the game there, but yeah, um, some of those games should be over. So we should have, potential two game sevens or we're going to have two two teams moving on into the next round so we'll be able to talk about that and then the last bit of news i have here on the nhl which is pr- some pretty big news alex govechkin makes a public statement saying he wants to retire a capital he loves the city of washington he's so thankful for what they, they've given him and um expect to to have a deal a new deal done soon like in the next few days so He's going to be a cat for life. Like I said the other day when you even brought that up, um, it's a no brainer. That's just like Crosby on the, on the penguins. It's kind of in hockey, those legacy guys really stay on the, those teams do what you would expect the team to do to keep a superstar like that. They, they hand him the keys and say, drive, <laughs> mm-hmm. drive for as long as you want to, buddy. You know what I mean? Cause those are hard, hard talents to find. I mean, He's on his way to become the greatest goal scorer of all time, arguably. I think I think he is just due to the goalies nowadays compared to back then and whatnot. Like, don't get me wrong. Gretzky still would be able to score some goals, but I don't think he would have been able to score as many as he did back then in today's NHL, just due to how skilled everybody is, especially with Ovi. He's old, late in his career, especially when the NHL like really changed to super fast, super young, and he's still doing it. So like that's mm-hmm. really impressive to be okay. I'm so set in my ways of how the NHL is with the physical style because that's how he plays. And now you're gonna like reverse that into super speed and your age. You're still going up. You're still getting older, and he still continues to put the puck in the net. So. Shout out to UOV. Can't wait to continue to watch and be interesting to see where Char lands if he decides to stick around or, or hang him up. But that's all I got here for tonight. Yeah, that's all I have as well. Um, again, uh, kind of, I guess, stay tuned as far as our schedule moving forward for our episodes. Uh, looks like kind of the night theme uh, is, might, might be the way we're leaning. So um, I guess stay tuned, stay patient with us as we kind of figure out a system as to how we're going to do these episodes. Again, feel free to leave feedback on them as well. There's a comment section down below every video um, to let us know what you think of the episodes, stuff you want us to talk about more, more about less about um, everything in between. Um, Again, we do the, we do the show for you guys. So the more feedback we get from you, obviously the better show we're going to make it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, everyone, for stopping by. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, pretty much every single social media. You can also find us if you search on Google in a league of their own podcast. Also, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that Anchor is associated with. And yeah, we, we do it for you guys. We're kind of playing around right now with a little bit of a schedule to see what works best for us now as we're moving on, moving our way on in the world and moving our way up. And obviously life happens and we want to continue to bring our show to you guys. So we're going to do whatever that takes to make that possible to get out content and episodes for you guys. And also don't, don't be afraid to go buy some of our merch down there. Click on, click on that link in the bio to go purchase yourself some in the league of their own merch. Um, Keep keep in tune with your Stanley Cup playoff bracket 
as you compete to be top three to win some free merchandise of your choice. And yeah, we uh, look forward to be back tomorrow and keep it coming for you guys. Sounds good. We will see you guys tomorrow. All right, peace.